Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre. I am a fourth grade teacher in Maryland and I also am my school's e-coach, which means I help teachers integrate educational technology in their classrooms. For today's episode of EdTech Made Easy, I wanted to give you all a tutorial for creating digital assignments that students can complete through Google Classroom. Now this is my third EdTech Made Easy video related to Google Classroom. So if you have not already, please make sure you go back and watch my Google Classroom tutorial and my Google Classroom tips and tricks, both of which will be linked down in the description box. For this video, I wanted to focus on using Google Slides to create different templates and graphic organizers that your students can complete digitally because I feel like that will be the most versatile type of assignment that you could adapt to fit your grade level or fit your subject area. The first step is to go to your Google Drive and create a new Google Slides document by clicking the new button and then clicking Google Slides. I always delete the text boxes that are already inserted so I have a clean slate. Then I change the size of the slide to match the size of a piece of paper so that if for any reason I need to print a student's assignment, I know it will properly fit on a page. You can change the size of the slide by clicking File and then clicking Page Setup. I will click the drop down and select custom. Then I will change the size to 11 by eight and a half and click apply. For this example, I'm going to make a vocabulary graphic organizer since that can be used for different subject areas. I'm going to name my document vocabulary graphic organizer original and I will explain why the word original is important later on in this video. Next, I'm going to start the design of the parts of my organizer that I don't want my students to be able to edit or change. I'm going to insert a table by clicking insert table, and then choosing two columns and two rows. I'm going to resize my table so it takes up most of my slide by right-clicking on my table and clicking Format Options. I'm going to adjust the size to be 10 and a half inches wide and eight inches high, and then center the table on the slide. I'm going to give it a thick black border by selecting the table and changing the outline color to black and changing the thickness to eight. Since this is a vocabulary organizer, I want to have students put the vocabulary word in the middle of the template, so I'm going to insert a rectangle in the center. I'm going to click on the Shapes tool and insert a rectangle. I can just click on the slide to insert it, and then I can right-click and select Format Options to change the specific size. I'm going to make it four inches wide and one inches high and center it on the slide. Now I'm going to change the fill color to white and give it an eight-point black border to match the table. Next, I'm going to to add titles to each section of my table, I can click in the cell and type the title such as definition, sentence, part of speech, synonyms, antonyms, and picture. Obviously, the word picture was hidden behind the rectangle, so I'm going to align the text in that cell to the right, and I'll do the same with the word sentence so they match. Now I can change the font and make the font size larger so it's easier to see. Now that I have my background elements, I want to export the slide as an image. So I'm going to click File, Download, and then JPEG Image. It will save that image to the downloads of my computer. Now I'm going to create a new Google Slides document and I'm going to name this one Vocabulary Graphic Organizer. The reason we named the first one with the word original is because that was the document we used to create the template but this document is the one we will actually share with students. Again, I'm going to delete the text boxes and change the slide size to 11 by eight and a half. I'm going to insert the image I downloaded as the background, so I want to click background and then choose image. I'm going to choose an image to upload and then find the image in my downloads folder. Once it uploads, I'm going to click done. Now you will notice I can't move any of the words or the lines of the organizer, which is a good thing when you are sharing it with students because you don't want them to accidentally delete an important part of the table. Next, you are going to insert text boxes where you want students to be able to type. I'm going to click the text box button and then click and drag to make a text box the size I want. I want students to know exactly where to type, so I'm going to type edit text in the text box. Then students will be able to delete that text and type in their own when they are completing the organizer. I can format the text the way I want it, so I'm going to change the font, make it larger, and center it in the text box. Now that I've created one text box, I can actually copy it and paste it where I want the next one. Then I can just resize it to fill the entire box. 
For the picture box, I want students to be able to insert their own pictures. So I'm actually going to leave this box blank and type directions in the speaker notes of the slide. I'm going to tell students how to insert a picture and then remind them to resize the picture as needed. I have found that students tend to be pretty intuitive when it comes to inserting pictures, so my directions don't have to be super detailed. The great thing about Google Slides is that you can easily duplicate a slide if you wanna have students complete the same organizer multiple times. Let's say I have five vocabulary words that I want students to complete. I can duplicate this slide five times by right-clicking on the slide on the left-hand side and then clicking Duplicate Slide. Now I'm ready to share this organizer with my students on Google Classroom. I'm going to go to Google Classroom and then go to the Classwork tab. I'm going to click Create and choose Assignment. I can give my assignment a title and I can add instructions as needed. I can also add a grade category, points, and a due date. Next, I need to attach the Google Slides document I created. I'm going to click the Google Drive logo at the bottom and then select the Google Slides I just created. After I click Add, I want to change the drop down to say make a copy for each student. This is the most important step because the default only allows students to view the file, but they won't be able to actually edit anything. If you select students can edit file, then students will all be editing the same document, which is super messy. You want to create a copy for each student so they can complete their own assignment. Once you have the settings the way you want them, you can click assign. Now, as your students complete the assignment, you will be able to view the document they edited, grade it as needed, add any comments, and return it to them to review. Now, this was just a single example. The different ways you can digitize assignments are truly endless. I want you to take the ideas and tips I gave you in this video and make it work for different types of assignments your students need to complete. But keep in mind, a worksheet on the computer is still a worksheet. However, creating digital assignments can make your grading easier, can present new opportunities for students to collaborate, and can allow students to develop digital fluency that will benefit them in the future. I know this process may have seemed time consuming, but I promise the more often you create these types of assignments, the easier it gets. My biggest suggestion would be to try to digitize one assignment per month. So it isn't too overwhelming, but you can try to build your repertoire of resources you have created. For those of you that have watched this far, I did want to give you the vocabulary template as a freebie in case you wanted to use it with your students. I will link it in the description box so you can save a copy to your Google Drive and then be ready to use it with your students right away. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it out with your teacher friends or anyone else who you think may find it useful. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher store, my merchandise store, and my Amazon store are in the description box and I'll catch you guys in the next one.